Hi everyone, welcome to Jabatiki. In microservice architecture, data inconsistency is a major challenge and it often caused by the dual write problem. So in this tutorial, we'll understand how to avoid data inconsistency in microservice architecture using transactional outbox pattern. Okay, all right. Don't worry, we'll take it step by step. First, we'll understand the problem statement. Then we'll explore the solution. And finally, we'll demonstrate the transactional outbox pattern with a hands-on example. So stick with me till the end to get a complete picture of this particular design pattern. Okay, cool. So without any further delay, let's get started. So before we start coding, let's understand why and when we need this transactional outbox design pattern. Okay, well, so let's start with a practical example. If you observe this, in exam hall, two students, John and Peter, they sit close to each other and doing their task. But John is talented, while Peter struggles a bit with his studies. So Peter started asking question to John. Hey John. Can you answer me question number 2? John was busy that time and he responded, Hey Peter, let me finish my task first, then definitely I will help you. Then after few seconds, again, Peter asked question to John, Hey, can you answer me question number 10? Then John was quite angry because of the exam pressure and he just went to the Peter saying that, Please don't disturb me. Then after few seconds, John being kind, he said the answer is 15, but Peter misunderstood it as 50 and wrote it down, not even knowing which question it was for. And he acknowledged saying that, hey, John, thank you for your help. Now after few days, the result came and Peter's parents were so happy, so they hit him like anything. So sad for this poor guy, isn't it? In fact, I believe some of you might have also experienced something similar in the past, including me. So if you had this kind of experience in past, then just do let me know in a comment section. If not, you must be talented like a John. There is no doubt. Right? Fine. Now let's figure out why the misunderstanding happened between John and Peter. So here, John was doing two tasks, writing his own answer and helping Peter. So this situation you can consider as a dual write problem. So here, while John was answering, he might be analyzing something. Hence, he answered wrongly or he answered correctly but Peter didn't listen carefully. Anything could be possible, right? Because of this, the data or answer is not consistent between these two students. That is what the biggest challenge in dual write problem. Now, if you understand this story, then let's move on and discuss one real-time challenge of dual write problem in microservice architecture. Okay? Now let's assume you have three different microservice, order service, inventory service and payment service. So when order service received a new order request, then first it write down to the database so that user can track their order status. However, at the same time, Order service also publish the event through Kafka so that other microservices can consume it and process it further. So if you observe in this architecture, we are again landed in dual write problem. At the same time, we are writing data into two different data source. One is the database and another one is the Kafka within a single transaction. So if you observe, in a single transaction, we are writing data to two different data sources. It means if there is a single failure, then it's really difficult to roll back the transaction, isn't it? So which can lead the data inconsistency between the microservices. Now think practically, what if the Kafka broker became temporarily unavailable during the transaction? Then the order will never be processed, right? Or what if while writing it to the database, there is a failure. But message will be published indicating that order was created 
when in reality it was not this is the clear picture of data inconsistency right now if you look into this problem technically then you will get some better picture of this issue so if you observe this particular code snippet then here at first place we are writing the order object to the dv then immediately after persisting it to the dv we are publishing it through the kafka okay and if you observe since we are performing this task in a single transaction while persisting record to the dv if that goes wrong then it's difficult to roll back because the message already published to the kafka correct so this is what the data inconsistency just we understand through the story and through the ecom scenario now how can we address this dual write problem in microservice architecture and avoid data inconsistency that's where the transactional outbox pattern comes in the transactional outbox pattern ensures reliable message delivery in distributed system which always guarantee that data consistency in distributed system okay don't worry we'll understand this definition with a hands on example but before that since we identify this kind of data inconsistency issue can be resolved by this transactional outbox pattern even you can go for the saga but saga is little bit complex compared to this transactional outbox pattern so let's see how this pattern can solve john and peter's problem and then we'll apply the same solution to our real time use case okay so in our story john was the culprit who made a mistake that is dual write problem so how can john implement transactional outbox pattern to provide the correct answer to peter it's very simple right let john write his answer and next instead of publishing it directly to peter he could maintain a cheat sheet where he can note down answer in sequence so that peter or other student who need the answer can directly fetch it from that cheat sheet in this way data or answer will be consistent between john and peter and peter won't miss out anything so here you can consider this cheat sheet as an outbox that holds copy of data for other to use and this design is known as the transactional outbox pattern it's simple right hope you got the context of outbox pattern and why it's very important in microservice architecture if yes then let's move one step ahead and map this pattern to our real time use case so if you can remember this flow so when order service received a new order request first we'll write them in the order table and then instead of directly publish order event through kafka or queue we'll create another table called outbox and we'll write it there within a single transaction okay so essentially we are creating a local transaction instead of distributed one because our goal is to avoid dual write isn't it now once you have order in outbox table the first step you need to set a flag to avoid duplicate processing so if you observe in this table i have defined a flag called each processed false and true false means that order needs to be processed and true means it is already processed we no need to consider this request whose flag is true okay now who will process those records from outbox table so for that what we can do we'll create a separate service called order puller or message relay service which will pull unprocessed message and publish them through the kafka so that other microservices can use that once order event publish then immediately set back the flag to true so that in next iteration our order puller service will not pull those processed order whose status is true so in this way we can maintain data consistent across microservices how simple is this isn't it this is what all about transactional outbox pattern i hope this is clear for you if yes let's see the implementation in action so let's get started so let's start creating the project from order service go to the spring initializer and then we'll create the project from scratch let's add all the required field 
then just define all the required dependency I will add web dependency then we need JPA we need a driver so I am using MySQL and also I need Lumbo all good let's generate the project and import it to our IntelliJ idea now go to the project and if you see here if you will open the palm.xml you can see here we are using the current Spring Boot version and if you will scroll down we have added this dependency JPA web MySQL Lombo right so here I am just adding open AI to just visualize the swagger document for our project okay just update the project now let's create couple of package so just create so we have defined couple of packages now if you observe here this particular order service needs to communicate to the DV so for that let's configure the data source related stuff so go to the resource application or properties then just add the field where you are just defining the driver URL username password and I want to see the SQL statement in the console so I have enabled this then this is what the port and we want this JPA to create the table for us so we have defined this DDL auto to update okay these are the basic configuration of spring data source configuration fine now let's just create the new order entity so I will go to the entity package and will create a new class then just define couple of field I will define order ID name customer ID product type quantity price and order date since we have used the Lombo I will annotate your order data we need all argument constructor we also need no argument constructor and since this is my entity I will define at the right entity and also I need to define at the right table annotation I mean it's optional if you want to customize your table name you can define this annotation so I will define order TBL also I need at the right builder so that I can set the value correctly okay with builder design pattern and since this is my ID I need to define at the right ID annotation and I want this ID to be auto generated so I will define generate value strategy identity ok all good now since we created the entity let's create the repo for it just create a interface then you need to extend this from JPA repo then here just define your entity that is order and data type of your primary key that is long fine all good we have created the entity we have created the repo now let's quickly create a service class just annotate at the red service then just define a method to create a order public will return the order object now just pass the order here fine now if you see the order entity we have the ID which will be auto generated you no need to pass this value name of the order customer ID product type quantity and price these are the things we need to pass as an input ID and date will be dynamically set correct so what I can do instead of directly play with the entity I will create a DTO class with those field okay that is the best coding practice right so just copy this and we'll create another package inside the common we'll name it DTO then I'll just create a class then I'll just define this field and I also copy these annotations specific to the Lombok and I'll just add here okay cool now simply we can change here order request DTO instead of order object right order request DTO so what we can do we need to convert this order request DTO to our order object then we can persist it to the DV right so if you can remember the first step we need to write the order object to our own DB so that user can track it 
right so what i can do i could do it here let's say i will create the object of order and i can set each and every value right order dot set name i can get it from the request detail and i can do that so name we have not added i believe let's see this is the name and go to your detail class yes we missed it so just add it okay so what i can do i can just do get name this way i can do that but rather than doing it here it's good practice to create a mapper so for that what i can do i will create a package here new package now in the mapper i will create a class so i named it order dto to entity mapper and then just define at the red component here now here what you want to do we'll take the input as a order request dto and we want to build a order object right so i'll just name it i mean i'll just return it order method name is map we'll take the input as a order request dto now what you can do it's simple you just build the order object by fetching the input from your input request okay so just return this object there is no rocket science okay just we have created a mapper method to get the value from order request dto and just map to your order object that's it now go to the order service i will just inject this class here just annotate at the right auto add now here what i can do i will just use this order entity mapper dot map give the order request dto it will give you a order entity right just return something return null something like that fine now this order you need to save to the order repo so you just need to inject the order repository here private now since you build the order object just use order equal to order repository dot save the object which is nothing the object you build fine so if you observe the image this part is done we are able to write to our order table so that user can track it along with that as per the transactional outbox design pattern what do you understand we also need to write a copy of our order in this outbox table correct so let me highlight like this in this outbox table with the format of id user id and payload in the form of string and by setting a flag okay so what we can do we'll also create another entity called outbox who will persist the record to this particular db okay so let's create another entity go to the entity i'll name it java class outbox then just define couple of field id of the outbox aggregate id is nothing your user id who purchased the order and what is the payload in the form of string the entire order object in the form of string then when the order was created and whether it is processed or not this is what the interesting flag based on this flag only we can play so if you can remember we have set the flag called is processed true uh, true and false right if it is true then the order is already processed just ignore it if the processed status is false it needs to be processed by the order puller okay so we are not focusing on the second part this part currently we are on the part one we are designing this system okay so what you can do just go to go to your entity and just annotate here i will copy directly right so i can copy from here i don't need other table annotation that's fine it will create the table with name outbox okay now i will also add the id generation annotation now it's simple right since you have the entity just create the repository new interface name it outbox repository then just extends from jpa repository define 
outbox which is your entity and primary key data type is long okay cool so we created the entity and repo now let's not confuse go to the service class what do you want if you can remember this while writing the object to the actual order DV we also need to write into the outbox table right so for that let's go to the service and while you persisting to your order table at the same time write it to outbox repo okay so what you can do I'll just inject here private outbox now what I can do here I will do just outbox repo dot save which object outbox entity correct but we don't have the outbox entity we need to build that entity object from this response okay once the order will be saved to the DV we'll take that input and we'll build a outbox result let's follow the best practice create a mapper class I'll just name it now just annotate here at the red component and then what this class will do it will take the input as a order entity and will return the outbox entity ok so return type is outbox just map take the input as a order now you can do the same builder pattern right you can do something like this outbox dot builder dot build get each object from order and set it in the outbox whatever the field you need here okay this is what the simple each and every value what I need in the outbox entity I have wrote them in this mapper class okay by default it is false and I'm just taking the order object converting to the JSON string using Jackson object mapper that's what the simple approach we do follow now let me use this class in the order service let me inject it now what I can do I will use this order entity to outbox entity mapper dot map take the order object and give me the outbox object ok so just get the outbox object now I want to save this outbox object to the DV and I want to return the final order object which is persisted to the DV ok how simple is this now tell me one thing if you understand the context correctly now let's say I am persisting something to order table it was persisted but somehow this outbox table is giving error ok I am unable to persist record to this particular table but record already persists to this particular table so in that case what you can do just follow the local transaction you need to follow the local transaction now if anything goes wrong on the line number 34 then this will also not execute this way both the table data will be in a sync ok fine now let's create a controller class so that we can test this create order flow ok just go to the controller package create a java class annotated here then just define the root URL I'll define slash API slash orders now just inject the order service here just define a post endpoint ok create the order take the order request detail as a input then just call the service and just return the result that is what we are doing here this is simple right all good I'll go to the main class I'll just start the project so if you see here it created the table called order table and outbox and it also started on port 9191 okay now go to the browser and just type swagger just give 9191 let's see so you can see our post endpoint just go here try it out let's add few record then we'll see okay so let's say name is mobile 
this is order name not customer name okay customer id is basant product type let's say electronics quantity let's say one now let's execute this you can see here record is inserted and this is what the response we got can you see here the status code is 201 and record is this let's add one more object Now let's save it and we'll see the result. The second order got inserted. Okay. Now if we'll verify in the DV, let me refresh this. We can see the two different table. Now let's filter the result. We got the two record. Okay. Now let's see the outbox table. Now if you see the result, id is 1 and 2, this is the aggregate id which is the user id, ok. So if you see here, we have the two user, basant id is 1, ram id is 2. So we can see the same here, ok. You can pass the id or you can pass the user name, this is up to you how you want to design. Now when it was created and see the payload and if you see here, processed is 0. So what happened in MySQL, it, if it is a 0, this is false. If it is a 1, this is true. So in our case, it is false, right? 0 means false, okay? So all good, we are able to save the record and these records are not processed yet, okay? This is the happy scenario we observe. Now what we can do, we can do one quick test to see the transaction is working in the same service or not or you can say whether our local transaction is working or not I will forcefully throw some error here I am forcefully throwing some arithmetic error ok now let me restart it so this part will be executed then it will throw the error so we need to validate whether the record is inserted here or not in the order table or not ok because after that it throw the error as per the implementation transactional if any failure occurs this should also auto roll back we no need to do anything but let's prove it right away go here and we'll add some new object let's say book sam something okay i'm just adding random value now just execute it we got the 500 internal server error and in console if you see what is the error see you can see the insert statement here ok but let's see whether record is inserted or not we are getting arithmetic exception that is genuine now go here let's remove this or let it be go and check the order table currently we have only two record right we cannot see the record of Sam even though you can see here the insert statement insert into order table so this happened because of the transaction ok in the same transaction these two logic is being executed if an, anything going wrong the things will be rolled back rather than persist the stale data ok so all good so we are done with the order service and we successfully write the record to order table and outbox table in a single transaction correct now since you have the record in outbox table those record needs to be processed okay so who will process that so for that what we can do we'll create a order puller service who will fetch the record from this outbox table with some time interval let's say for every two minute or every three, min three minute based on your need you can configure the scheduler okay once order puller service found any new unprocessed record then immediately we will publish that through Kafka so that whoever consumer need those record they can consume it ok so our next task to create the order puller service ok so let's go to the spring initializer so we have already this template let me change the name and we added the jpa web 
driver and lumbo so what additional dependency we need if you see here we need one kapka dependency right so just go here and add the dependency kapka spring for apache kapka just click on this and all good generate the project then just import it in your IntelliJ idea so here is our order puller service now if you understand this flow correctly this order puller needs to talk to this outbox right so what i will do we will copy this outbox entity and its repo in the order puller service project okay so for that what i can do first let me create couple of package then just copy the entity and repo from the order service we need this outbox entity just paste in the polar then also we need the outbox repo just go here and just copy this all good right now what is the next step so now this order puller needs to fetch all the unprocessed record from this outbox table okay so how we are defining the record is whether it is processed or it needs to be processed so we have defined a flag based on that flag order puller needs to face the record from outbox so just go to the repo and then then just define the query here you need list of outbox entity and how you want to fetch you want to fetch find by this is the jpa syntax based on which field you want to filter the record based on this boolean flag okay so find by processed if it is false then give me that record fine this will give you all unprocessed fine now we need to call this method so it's simple right so let me create a service class then I will write down the steps what we are going to perform. So let's name it. Then just annotate this at the red service. Now here let me write a method public void. What is the what is the task we are going to do as part of this order puller service? So you can give a valid name. Okay. So you can define poll outbox messages or poll outbox and publish because if you remember that is what the job we want to perform in order puller face the record from outbox and just publish it these are the two tasks we are going to perform as part of this order puller service okay so the first point fetch okay then the second point publish record to Kafka or Q, whatever you are using. Simple, right? Now this is straightforward. And wh where I can get the unprocessed record from the outbox based on the flag processed, right? That is what the query we have defined here. So just call that. So first let me inject the repository. Then it's simple, right? So here I can call repository dot find by processed false. Now it will give me list of unprocessed record. So I'll name it unprocessed records. Fine. And I want this particular puller to keep pulling the record from outbox. For that, what I can do. I will define a scheduler here. So I will just define enable scheduling. Then I will just define scheduled, right? And I will just specify the time at what frequency you want to run this. So I will just define run it for now. I mean, since we are doing it for testing purpose, let's run it on every 60 second or every one minute. This method will run on every one minute and will face the record from outbox table which is not processed okay now the first part is done 
Now since you find the record, then what is the second step? Just publish to the Kafka. Correct? So I will just define Kafka template here. And I can just do the Kafka template dot send. I can give the topic name and then the data which I want to publish. Okay. But rather than doing this code here, better let me create a another package called publisher then just create a class just name it then just annotate at the red component now write all the Kafka related logic here instead of writing it in your service so just copy this go to the publisher now here I will write a method public of type string now you have the Kafka template with you, you can just call send and on which topic you want to publish, let's say order or outbox order event, something like that. Outbox event and what data you want to publish, this one, payload. That simple, right? So it will return you the completable future. Just add the proper log statement to identify the message is being published or it's failed okay so just replace this there is no rocket science here we are just publishing the record to the Kafka topic the topic name outbox event so rather than hardcode the topic what I can do I will create a config class I'll create another package called config then I'll just define here just annotate at the rate configuration then I will just define the topic name in properties file so that I can load it dynamically in the producer and consumer wherever I want ok so let's say order.puller.topic name is this now here let me load this property value in the config class private string then just define at the red value give the key now I will ask Kafka to create topic for me so I will just create a bin of new topic then just return new topic of and define the argument I mean whatever the partition you want to assign for this topic so the topic name is this create the topic name for me and partition is 3 ok so this is this should be new topic see here string name number of partition and replica that is what I am just define topic name is this number of partition is 3 and replica count is 1 just define this at the red bin so that an application startup if it found your Kafka broker and Jukeeper is up and running this will be executed and will create the topic for you and the topic name we have defined in our properties file ok now let's do one thing let's load this value in our publisher so rather than hard code it we can define the topic name here all good now just go to your service class here just remove this so what we can do here now we want to publish the message that is the next step so just inject your publisher class so next just we need to iterate this unprocessed record list and then we will pass one by one so what we can do uh, just iterate it unprocessed records dot for each then outbox message now what I can do I will keep in the try catch because there could be a chance to get the error right I don't want to block the entire flow rather than if there is a failure I want to skip that and I want to allow other other records to continue ok so here what I can do I will just use message publisher dot publish outbox dot get payload because that is what the order object okay that is what I want to publish 
once it is processed once the payload or the order is processed then immediately what i want to do if you remember immediately i want to update the order status from false to true so that when the next scheduler will run he will only filter the record which is false that is what the simple trick we need to play here okay so what i can do once that will be done i will just set outbox dot set process to true okay see this is the simple logic this is how this particular outbox table being shared by these two services order service and order puller service so order service by default keep the status as a false for that order object once it will be processed then immediately this order puller will set the status of that order to true that is what just these two services are being used this particular table to set the flag so based on that the order will be processed or uh, what i can say it will be uh, continue further okay once that is done just update the repo out outbox repo so you can add a comment here for better understanding you can define update the message update the to avoid duplicate message okay so what happened now this particular after let's say it ran first time then in second time when it will run he will only filter the record whose processed flag is set as a false okay so that is the reason once we published immediately we set it back to true so that it won't be duplicate further okay that is what the simple thing what is the why it is crying let it be see this id is very smart than us so what he is suggesting just do it so now what i can do i'll just add a log statement okay so i'll just use sl4j from lombok the reason i am i want to add the log to demonstrate the number of unprocessed record we are finding here okay so i'll just define log dot info and if there is okay why we are doing the concatenation just remove it now if there is any error occurs i just want to log that all good right so we are done with the puller service all the use case what we supposed to write in the order puller and order service we are done now only the pending part just configure the data source in the order puller service so for that what i can do just copy it from the order service so we'll also change the port of our order puller okay so let it be 9292 that's it now if you remember in the order service we are forcefully throwing the exception correct to just validate the transactional behavior so just remove this we don't need it now let me restart the order service so this order service is up and running on port 9191 now just minimize this and go to our order puller but to start the order puller we need the kafka setup first correct we need to start the jukeeper and broker so what i can do i have documented the commands so let me open that so we'll start the jukeeper and we'll start the kafka server creation of topic through the command is not required because we have defined in our config bin fine so let me copy this command then just go to the terminal and run it similarly just start your kafka server copy this command just open the second terminal paste it now jukeeper and kafka server both up and running now let's start our application which will be run on port 9292 and since we have defined the scheduler it will run on every one minute 
okay 60 second so we also added the log statement to validate whether really it faced the record from the outbox uh, entity or not outbox table or not then we'll validate in the offset explorer whether it is publishing the unprocessed messages and is setting back the flag to true or not okay that is what our goal to validate so let's start it go to the main class so cool if you see here the output since we start our app immediately the scheduler will start so it trigger the select query processed from outbox table okay and what is that then it also update and it also sent kapka message you can see here right this is what the log we have added so i just want to validate this statement unprocessed record count let's see yeah you can see here initially we added two record to the dv correct if you remember basant and ram these two record is being processed at first iteration you can see here right record count 2 now if you want to validate the same in offset explorer meanwhile let it open so what we can do before one minute let's add couple of object okay so just go to the swagger let's add some random value because we because within a minute we need to add couple of record book just enter it something test Five triple nine. I am executing the same record multiple times. Okay. The record count is reached to eleven. Now let's validate whether my puller is able to face those records or not. So let's see. Yeah, you can see the console, right? It's keep rolling with the value which we just published okay so if you'll see here unprocessed if you'll filter this is the first statement see here when second time it iterate during that time we have not added anything in the order service so they, you can consider there is no new request in the order service so the record count is zero it fire the select query to fetch all the unprocessed record the count is zero then with the next iteration we added random object okay i mean order service received eight new order request you can consider in this way and each order it iterate and publish in the kafka now you can write a consumer i mean payment service or inventory service they can write a consumer to consume these messages okay from our end we are done there is no data inconsistency is going forward now consumer need to write a consumer i mean who want to use those things they need to write a consumer to listen from this topic you can see here right now see here while explaining these things it completed a minute and within that minute we have not processed anything there is no record so for better clarity let me add one two now i have added only two record okay now let's see after a minute it should display the process record count two and both need to publish to kafka okay great can you see here unprocessed record count two and then it published to the kafka this is what the message we have added in kafka right right after it published to kafka it immediately update the flag to true that is what also we can validate in the table so just refresh it not this table there are so many record we have added and few of them are duplicated to just demonstrate the use case now see here all the record flag is now one one means true zero means false so first time when you will add let's say i will add something again let's add some meaningful name let's say uh, what is this pen customer id let something john study let it be quantity in a 10 600 
okay now just execute check in the dv status is zero okay now in the console you will find the processed count one after this okay because this is the past run we are seeing just clear it you can see here unprocessed record count one what is that study john and pen now in dv it was zero i didn't refresh it now just refresh it you will find the status the flag is get, get changed okay basically flag is updated by the polar fine now let's go to the offset explorer what is the topic name unprocessed order event see the data all the new data you can see here right you can see the each and every record now with this approach you will also get another advantages in some certain period if you want to reply some specific object order object you can happily do that since you are storing it in a kafka you can take the payload and if needed you can reply that okay that is what another advantages of using this transactional outbox pattern okay so for demo purpose rather than keep checking in the dv and go to the kafka offset explorer so what i'll do i'll write a consumer usually consumer should not be part of this order puller but for demo purpose to simulate the response i'm just defining a consumer here but in real time consumer should be your payment service or inventory service they need to write this consume logic okay so anyway i'm not going to write a complex logic i just want to print the statement just create a package just add it so this consumer will listen to this particular topic and we are just printing it now let's restart only this particular consumer part okay so let's clear this now let me add couple of record let me change some field three four time i added the same some different value two times same okay now first if you'll validate in the dv all the recent record status is zero now if you will check here in few seconds you will find the log here okay so we need to wait because it will start on every one minute so one minute is not completed so we need to wait you can see here right total number of record let's see i need to filter on processed record count seven you can see here then let's take a single statement and we'll understand it okay so you can see here the record is 15 it triggered the select statement and it get the record then it immediately update it where is the consumer okay what is the statement we have added in consumer event consumed right so you can just filter here consumed yeah you can see here right consumer count should be seven yeah count is seven and you can see the consume i mean consumer statement okay so this is how you can design transactional outbox pattern in microservices to avoid dual write problem and also to avoid data inconsistency between microservice architecture okay so i personally feel this transactional outbox pattern is very powerful to mitigate data inconsistency issue in microservice architecture and it is also not that much difficult to understand and implement okay so go through this video and try doing the poc if you found any difficulty or confusion do let me know in a comment section that's all about this particular video guys thanks for watching this video meet you soon with a new concept